Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fourth and final video. So day 10 is going to take us to around the 14th of September. We'll be able to extend out beyond that yesterday's GFS and ECM ensembles, maybe around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFSV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That's going to take us, I think today that gets us to the 1st of October actually. Uh, so I'll get on with that for you very shortly. We'll go through some CT dates as well uh, for September, just to put the month in context. Uh, so I'll get on with all of that for you in a moment. And of course, we will have a look at what's going on with Hurricane Larry as well. So all of that's still to come. Uh, just to say that the first video released today was our 7 a.m. forecast. I've uh, also released the guys with his September forecast today, as well as the uh, weekend forecast. So it's been a busy day at Gaswell today. Please check out all the videos like share subscribe thank you so much everybody uh for doing that and drop a comment as well of course and let us know what you think um now we're gonna put on around 10 subscribers that's all to get to 11.9k subscribers so we are very very close now to uh 11.9k subscribers when we reach 11.9k subscribers we're going to open up our prize draw um because we're going to be giving away this uh fantastic gas whether it's Pillow, two of these will be given away um, when we uh, when we uh, reach uh, 12k, and when we hit 11.9k, we'll start taking everybody's names, um, you know, through through Discord, and uh, also you can email them to me uh, to gazoffice@gmail.com, and, uh, and and we'll start making a list, you know, of everybody's uh, names to go on to the uh, name picker. And uh, when we hit 12k, we'll, we'll uh, do a live stream, or, or, or part of a live stream will be the name picker, and we'll give away two of those. Uh, you know, two of those are uh, amazing uh, pillows, uh, some Gav's Webby's merch. So we're almost there now uh, to when we start taking people's names down. Another 10 subscribers to go. That's going to get us to 11.9k. If you aren't yet subscribed to our channel, then please give us a sub and tell friends, family, anybody else who subscribe. Get us to 11.9k, and then we will be able to start opening up this uh, prize draw. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for getting us uh, this far. Hopefully, we might, might be able to hit 12k in uh, September. That would be good, wouldn't it, if we could? Uh, right, let's ca crack on then. So, I'm going to start off in the tropical Atlantic. So, this is from National Hurricane Center. Two interest areas. We've got this yellow X just here. Uh, now, that's Disturbance uh, 1, with a 0% uh, chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours, and a 30% chance in the next 5 days. So at the minute, we don't need to worry too much about that. The main focus is on Hurricane Larry. Just here, there is Hurricane Larry, uh, currently giving maximum sustained winds of 115 mph, so he's now a... Uh, major Category 3 hurricane, uh, giving maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. And uh, Larry is moving uh, west-northwestwards at 16 miles per hour, with minimum sense pressure of 965 millibars. Uh, now, this is what uh, National Hurricane Center is forecasting Larry to do. So, the current position is just there. Uh, and you remember yesterday, it was like forecast to weaken as it got towards Bermuda. Now it's staying as a major hurricane right the way up to Bermuda. This is the cone area just here, but, but we could see, uh, you know, uh, Larry within as we get towards Thursday. And by that time, clearly, Larry is bearing down on the Bermuda Islands. Uh, so all eyes, you know, uh, in Bermuda, I'm sure, will be focused on uh, this uh, major, major hurricane. Up until then, not impacting any sort of land area, just a very serious, major, uh, you know, uh, very, very nasty uh, hurricane in the middle of the ocean, not impacting anything directly. But by Thursday, yes, definitely heading towards uh, Bermuda and still as a major hurricane at that point. You'll notice Larry is getting closer to the eastern seaboard of the states at this point, but still well away from it um, up to Thursday. But of course, if Larry was to carry on going in that sort of direction, and eventually, not impossible, Larry could find uh, itself uh, towards the east coast of America or the northeast coast of America uh, again. But it looks as though it's beginning to curve more northwards, doesn't it, actually, by um, by Thursday. So, so it's like northwestwards over the next two, three, four days. 
um, in that in that fashion. But then as it gets towards Bermuda, it looks like it starts to curve a little bit. So maybe the East Coast uh, in Seaboard uh, will be spared. Let's have a look at the uh, discussion page. Now, where is that? That's just there. Um, right, OK. So uh, this is forecast to reach Category 4 hurricane status uh, in 36 and 48 hours time going uh, up to maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour by Thursday as it's bearing down on Bermuda has weakened a bit but still uh, you know still category three still 120 mile an hour sustained winds uh, about at that point if the forecast code is correct about to hit Bermuda so Larry is a very 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 intense and vigorous storm and it's going to have impacts for us actually not directly um, necessarily, but uh, I'll talk you, you know, I'm going to go through generic charts in a moment. You'll see that there's a huge amount of uncertainty from around this time next week within the model output, and it's all down to where Larry goes when, uh, as an ex-hurricane, uh, Larry moves into the northern Atlantic and, uh, you know, what impacts that has on the wider Atlantic circulation. So Larry is going to be an important player for us in the UK and across northern Europe as well. More about that later in the video. Right, the CT is uh, currently standing at uh, 15.3. So this is already starting to move up. It's going to get rocket boosters in the next few days, I can tell you that. But at the moment, it's only half a degree above the rolling average. That's provisional up to yesterday, September the 3rd. Uh, my good friend Simon, a.k.a. Global Warming at the Weather Outlook Forum, is projecting that by the 18th of uh, September, the city is likely to be sitting very close to 17 degrees. Really, really warm, uh, even into the second half of September. If that was to stay at that level, we would be talking about the hottest September on record. Of course, it will be very hard to keep the CT at 17 degrees you know, right way through to months end, but certainly into the second half of September, very, very warm, uh, uh, very, very warm September CET indeed. I thought I'd have a look at September with the CET, so this is the September temperature page uh, from the UK Met. This goes all the way back to 1659, the oldest and uh, most reliable long-term temperature record anywhere on Earth. Of course, the further back you go, the more unreliable uh, it gets. So it's 1666. That's interesting because, of course, September 1666 had the Great Fire of London. Um, it followed a very hot summer, actually, in 1666 with a, uh, with a June city of 15.0, a July city of 18.0, and an August city of 17.0. As I say, it's only ref a reflection that far back, but it is pretty reliable, even even back then. Uh, you know, we, we know that that was a hot summer um, and a very dry summer as well. And so although the September city at 14.0 wasn't particularly warm, it, because it had been so hot and dry through the summer, um, London became a tinderbox. And that's how, you know, uh, that's how the fire started in, uh, in, in Pudding Lane, of course, famously. And, uh, and, and you know, the great fire uh, commenced after that very hot and dry summer. Uh, anyway, let's come on down. And uh, so it's a snapshot, you know, but it's not exact until you get a little bit further on. Let's come on down into uh, the current year then, 2021. There it is. Uh, so, of course, it's been a very strange year so far. We have a cold average January, a couple of very mild months for uh, for February and March. We have our coldest April since 1986, followed by our coldest May since 1996. We have a very warm June and July combination at 15.5, 17.0. Much cooler for August at 15.8. Of course, this is where September is going to be placed just here. Now, there is an idea. I know that a lot of people have the idea that September is uh, more like a summer month now. Actually, we don't really see that as much within uh, within the CT over more recent years. That was the case, like, back in the late 1990s and the 2000s. More recently, September has had a lot of variability. So last year, for example, CT at 13.9 was actually quite close to average. A little bit warmer uh, than average at 14.3 in 2019. Near normal in 2018 at 13.7. A bit colder than average in 2017. Exceptionally warm in uh, 2016. That's our last really warm September. We reached 34 degrees uh, on a couple of days 
in September uh, 2016. That's in the middle of the month. Cold in September 2015 at uh, 12.6. Quite warm in 2014, 15.1. Near normal uh, in uh, 2013 at 13.7. Significantly below average. Cold average in 2012 at 13.0. Warmer average in, 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 uh, in um, 2011 at 15.1. Near normal at uh, 2010. So you see the idea that September is quite variable. Uh, now, with, uh, you know, every month looking a little bit different uh, from one another. Whereas back in, like, the 2000s, actually, September just tended to be quite uh, a warm month. So, uh, for example, we've got 1998 at 14.9, 1999 at 15.6, 2000 at 14.7. Cooler one in 2001, and then pretty warm for 2002, uh, 2003, 2004, 2005. All, you know, generally quite significantly warm than average. And and our last, uh, exce our last exception warm uh, September. In fact, this is the hottest September on record, I think, for the CET, um, is in 2006 at 16.8. So you can see that September can uh, can be a very, very, very warm month. Uh, you know, it can all be on, on a par with, like, high summer. Um, and, and like I said, we've never had a 17 Celsius CET September. But, I mean, at 16.8, it was only 0.2 of a degree off it in 2006. So clearly there is the potential within... You know, within within the atmosphere, the, the possibility is there that you could get a 17 Celsius CET September, even though we've never had one, because there's only 0.2 of a degree off that in 2006. We have 2007 and 2008 coming out a little bit cooler, 2009, 14.2. So it's really from around 2007, 2008, but it's sad. Uh, rather more variability uh, within September CT. Before that, though, through the late 90s and into 2000, we did go through quite a significant run of uh, warmer than average uh, Septembers. Um, we had a very, 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 very warm September uh, a really long time ago as well in the 1700s. It was this year. Which I'm looking for right now. 1729, there it is, at 16.6 .6 for a long, long time. That was like the long standing September CT temperature record uh, from 1729, I think, all the way to 2006. That was the warmest September on record. And then 2006 beat it by, by 0.2 of a degree. Um, so that was always one of the longest standing temperature records within the CT, but it did get, it did get beaten just. In, uh, in 2006. Quite unusual, quite rare for September to have a 16 Celsius uh, CT. There are a few examples, but not all that many of them um, within the record. Generally, the warmest Septembers are like in the 15s, but occasionally can pop up to, uh, to the 16th. There's another one just there in 1865 when we came out at 16.3 um, with that one. So, so yeah, it has happened, you know, it does happen occasionally. We go at September CT in the 16th. Has, has obviously got a little bit more uh, common over the past, um, over past decades. Uh, but uh, even now, it is still quite rare, actually, to get a September CT in, in the 16th. So we should wait and see where it all uh, plays out. Uh, of course we will. By the way, last time I had a very cold September, and by very cold I'm talking about under t uh, 12 degrees, was actually 1986 uh, when we had a September CT, there it is, at 11.3, 11.3 in September 1986. That was our last really, really cold uh, September. So it's been a, been a long time since we had a, uh, had a very cold September. Um, and uh, and yeah, we wait and see, you know, whether whether that uh, whether we get one. I suppose we will at some point or another. Remember, we just had our or a couple of months ago, we had our coldest April since 1986. So I suppose one day we'll probably get our coldest September since 1986. But at the moment, uh, that's the last time we had a September CT under 12 degrees. Right, so that's brought it all into context. Now let's start having a look at some weather then. Uh, so uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. We're going to Birmingham today. So red line, 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Now we're near normal with the upper air temperature at the moment. But as I say, we're going to see the temperature getting really hot over the coming days. Really hot for September. And uh, I think we'll see the temperature, you know, probably Tuesday, uh, certainly Wednesday, maybe uh, maybe into Thursday, but a little bit harder, I think, on Thursday with showers breaking out. But 
certainly Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, reaching 30 degrees, 86 Fahrenheit across some parts of central and southern England. There is a cool down that is in evidence there uh, as we go into the second half of next week and into uh, the weekend of the 11th and the 12th of September. We revert back close to average. And then we have all of this scatter through the middle part of September in the second half of the month. And that is down to uh, to Larry, a lot, or a lot of that's down to what's going to happen with Larry as well. You'll notice the thick green line, which is the GFS operational run, really taking off there again as we go into the middle part of the September. It, it, the midnight GFS operational run did become uh, hot. This is something we're seeing repeatedly within the GFS operationals, but they are, you know, becoming very warm at the moment for the middle and second half of September as well. Um, so so if that came off, then, then we would be looking at a notably warm month. But of course, we cannot discount these cooler ensemble members that we have down here as well. So a lot of uncertainty within the model output from around the 11th, 12th September onwards in terms of whether we cool down, if we do, how much we cool down and whether we warm things back up. Lots of dry weather to come over the next few days as well. So this is a proper burst of summer weather. The temperature is going to become hot. It's going to be mainly dry. And there will be plenty of sunshine. From around Thursday onwards, precipitation comes back. That could be associated with a little bit of a fungi breakdown. And then around the middle part of September and into the second half of the month, we do have rainfall spikes coming through. So it might turn more unsettled. But again, with so much uncertainty within the um, within the temperature part of the upper air temperature ensemble graph, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're going to have to wait and see exactly how it all works out from like the 12th of September onwards. Temperature anomalies from the 4th to 12th of September certainly going to be significantly above average. We're not alone. Most parts of Europe looking uh, really warm uh, as well in the uh in the uh, uh uh week head so so yes very significantly above average temperature anomalies and still significantly drier than average as well from the 4th through to 12th of september Rachel right, wind from that from earth north school dot net shows that high pressure is in control of the weather still as it has been for uh, about about three weeks now. High pressure is shifting its position, but we're drawing in more of an easterly wind. We're losing the northeast, but brought all of that cloud. We're turning wind into the east, and in the next couple of days, we're going to go from easterlies to southeasterlies. And that really will start to drag up some uh, significantly warmer or hotter air from the south. Right, so let's start looking at some model data then. Uh, how I've returned. Right, this is how the uh, UK Met is looking for midnight on uh, Tuesday. High pressure reaching through the country and drawing up a hot southerly wind. That carries on into uh, Wednesday as well. Low pressure is developing out to west, southwest of Ireland. Uh, with high pressure to our east, we bring up this really hot southerly wind. Really hot for the time of year, I mean. Um, we go through into uh, midnight on Thursday. This trough low pressure gets closer to us. Could start to trigger some heavy showers. And some furnace. All devils in the detail with that, of course. And then the low pressure sort of pushes through as we go through Thursday and uh, into Friday. It gets us to midnight on Saturday when we're starting to draw in rather cooler northwesterly uh, wind. Then notice Larry is up here. There's the uh, there's uh, what will still be, I think, at that point, still be Hurricane uh, Larry off Newfoundland. And, uh, you know, where Larry goes after that is having big impacts within the rest of the model output. OK, so that's UK Met. Done as far as we go to UK Met. It's midnight on Saturday. This is how the GFS midnight run is looking. Now, we know from your summer graph, this is going to get hot again um, from around the middle of September onwards. Let's see how that happens. This is Tuesday. High pressure sitting over to the east country. Up draws that hot southerly wind. That carries on into Wednesday as well. Low pressure is developing to our west and southwest, that begins to push northwards and northeastwards, could trigger thunderstorms around mid part of the week, around Wednesday into Thursday. The devil's in Medita. By the time we get through to Friday, it's like Friday, that low pressure to the north of Scotland, we're starting to draw in a cooler northwesterly wind around the area of low pressure. So definitely a bit of a cool down coming up later on next week and turning more showery as well. Then Larry moves into the North Atlantic. There's uh, Hurricane Larry just there off the uh, coast of Newfoundland on the uh, 11th of September. Now, what the GFS does with Larry is uh, sort of stalls it in the middle part of the Atlantic just here. 
And that, and then moves up towards Greenland, that has the effect of building up another area of high pressure next weekend over the UK and western parts of Europe. So so Larry sort of stalls in the Atlantic and then pushes up to Greenland, uh, takes warm and, uh, and wet weather up to Greenland Iceland, I suppose. And to the east of Larry, we get this big area of high pressure then starting to develop. And that sets us off and running into another spell of very warm to hot weather through the middle part of September. This is day 10, uh, 14th of September, with high pressure just to our east over low countries in Germany. Back up comes those... A uh, hot southerly southeast winds. We get another one of these cut off lows developing uh, to the west of Biscay and Spain and Portugal. So, combining the low out there with that high pressure to east and northeast, yes, we draw in those hot southerly and southeast winds again. Messy upper air temperatures for Wednesday, the 15th of September, beyond day 10, we've got the 15 cells Iceland back in across uh, England and Wales again. And uh, then this fungi trough gets closer to us as we move into the extended range, possibly bringing thunderstorms from more southern parts of the country and a Scandinavian high begins to uh, get going uh, as we move up towards the end of the GFS big night run. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia, still low pressure out to our west, still drawing up the wind generally I think from like a southerly southeast direction. So probably even then still quite warm but not as warm as it is in the days before. You'll notice there is another hurricane or, or remnants of a hurricane or tropical storm again moving into the North Atlantic there right at the very end of the GFS uh, midnight uh, run. Eventually, if we keep moving these storms into the North Atlantic, eventually one of these is gonna is gonna break the ridge. Eventually, one of these will break the ridge and and push through and and bring us properly unsettled wet and autumnal weather. It's a question of when it happens. Um, if these if these big you know big uh, ex hurricanes keep moving into the North Atlantic. Right, that's the midnight GFS run. This is how the uh, 6 o'clock run is looking, the 6 said. Again, all very samey, same for Tuesday. High pressures over into the east country, drawing up those very warm to hot, southerly southeast winds into the middle part of the week. Got a bit of a foggy breakdown taking place, especially, I think, for northern areas. A little bit less conclusive breakdown, perhaps, for southern areas. Uh, there's the remnants of Larry there by 6 a.m. next Saturday to south of Newfoundland. Again, having a very similar impact to Midnight Run on the 6 there, building up the ridge to the east of it over the UK and Ireland. And so, again, we see uh, next weekend uh, that Larry pushes northwards to Greenland. That promotes this ridge of high pressure over to the east of the country. Off we go again as we move into the middle part of uh, September with the 6th then. We also have high pressure taking over and we draw in those very warm or hot southerly southeast winds once again. That's the 15th of September, just beyond day 10. Again, we've got high pressure to our east, uh, drawing up those very warm to hot southerly southeast winds. And this goes on then into the extended range with the GFS 6 then as well. Look at that high pressure just ridging through northern and western parts of Europe. A cut off low in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. This was a very, very hot GFS run, I have to say, in the second half of September. This is the kind of thing that would, you know, would have to start thinking about you know, maybe breaking temperature records uh, with this September. It's the kind of thing that could do that. Um, with this high pressure just continuously sits to our east and northeast, with below pressure in the Atlantic drawing up these uh, hot winds from the south. Into the very end of a GFS 6 set, which gets us to Monday 20th of September. Again, we're just uh, under high pressure. It's position changed a little bit, but still, that high pressure is fending off those areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. My, meanwhile, northern and northeast Europe are actually quite cool with a lot of this, with northerly winds um, bringing properly autumnal weather to Scandinavia, the Baltic Sea, northeastern parts of Europe as well. Very interesting output from the uh, GFS operations today. Right, moving on to the GM. If you're enjoying the video, then please give me a smash your like button. Make sure you're to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody. Give me that job, comment, let us know what you think. This how the GM is looking again. High pressure is in control on Tuesday. We're looking mostly dry and hot through to the middle of the week. Uh, yes, still drawing up those southerly south pieces. Then in comes this low, meandering in from off the Atlantic, late Wednesday to Thursday. Might be the trigger for some thunderstorms and start to cool things down as well. Into the end of the week. This is very different again. Uh, this is very different to the GFS. Out, but this next weekend, 
Saturday 11th of September. Look at this. Low pressure pushing through. We get wind into the north. Uh, there's Larry around the south of Newfoundland uh, just there. So look what happens then. Uh, we draw down much cooler air from the north of the GM next weekend. No sort of renewed push from the south. Actually, we're bringing the minus 5 south iceberg very close to northern parts of uh, Scotland. And even down in the south, where it's not as cool as it is over north, but even in the south, it is a lot cooler than like the GFS output is uh, is showing. And up to day 10, we do get ourselves back to high pressure, but it's not a particularly warm high at all. Look at the upper air temperature. They're actually quite cool and probably cool, cool enough for ground frost across northern areas. So, so we are back in a high pressure by day 10 with the GM as well, but it is a much, much cooler area of high pressure uh, with that one. So that's different, very different to, to the GFS. Uh, and, uh, and of course, it's all possibilities. It's all scenarios. Uh, and a lot of it is being caused by what is going on uh, with Larry, uh, of course. So, so again, this is how the GM handles Larry. Uh, has it just here to South Newfoundland on uh, Sunday? And, uh, and just sort of in the Atlantic, but, but not in a fashion that will draw up heat into the south. ECM looks like that again. High pressure is dominating the weather as we go through Tuesday and on into Wednesday, drawing up that very warm hot sunny wind. Then this uh, thundery trough comes in off the Atlantic from uh, from uh, Thursday into Friday. So again, we could break out some thunderstorms at the end of the week. Into the weekend, uh, different scenario again. Uh, so that's uh, Larry just there to the south of Greenland on Sunday. 12th of September, uh, we've got a ridge to the west of Larry, but nowhere near as, as intense as the GFS has it. And with this, we're actually pulling in a relatively cool northeasterly wind again, with low pressure around Spain and into the bay of Biscay. By day 10, we're actually moving the remains of Larry as an area of low pressure into the country. So the ECM out of the three by day 10 is the most unsettled and probably wettest of, of the scenarios. Um, and that would be perhaps a commencement of the autumn there by the middle of September. So, you know, going through the model output, it is so uncertain, isn't it, for, uh, for the next week to 10 days. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So, lots of dry weather over next day. So, with some wind and rain across West Scotland and Northern Ireland, though, um, later tomorrow and into Monday. Most of that sort of fizzles out and, and dies to death, really, uh, as we go into the of next week as high pressure takes So Then later next week, we start getting these heavy showers, potentially thunderstorms, particularly in Northern and Western areas. You see, not convincingly wet in that southeastern corner. A lot of this precipitation is across northern and western parts of the country until later on, and then maybe we do get some storms by next weekend breaking out in the south and in the southeast. Many in the more extended range heading up towards uh, day 10. Well, clearly we start to turn properly unsettled then with wet and windy weather beginning to move in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Right, let's turn off webcam and have a look at the options of the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10. These are them. This is going to get us to the 14th of September. We have 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our north. Lower pressure is to our west and southwest, and winds will be coming in from an east south BC direction. That's probably in line with like what the GFS operations are doing. Uh, will probably be quite hot, bring wind up from a southerly south BC direction and uh, reasonably dry the high pressure fending off the lows in the Atlantic. 18 going in that direction. 12 with deep low pressure over to the west of the country. That's going to be much more unsettled. Probably still quite warm with wind in from the southwest, but will definitely be a lot more unsettled. 11, uh, even stronger with that ridge just to our east and southeast. And again, drawing up very warm or potentially quite hot southerly southeast is. And 10 with low pressure over top of the country. That includes the operational run as well, by the way. Um, so that's probably the coolest and most unsettled option. Not sure the, GF, the ECM operation run was greatly supported by its ensembles today. Uh, the majority of options is probably going to be the 18 man, the 11 man, which is the drier, warmer option, actually. 
in two weeks' time. These are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 19th of September. 19 members of the East Sound Souls with low pressure to the south of Greenland, bringing in winds from the west. We could be drawing up some quite warm air from the south with that too. Uh, 18 will have high pressure around Greenland and Iceland with low pressure over Canada. That's a very different situation. We're bringing in cool air from the north with that. That's probably autumnal type weather. And then 14 with high pressure to our west, but also ridging into our south to some degree, probably sending the jet stream on a bit of a northwest southeast alignment uh, with that one. So, to its time, we might be into autumnal conditions, but of course, so much uncertainty in 10 days' time means that anything beyond that comes with extra health warnings. Uh, CMSB2 finally means a 500 millibar heights breaking down into wheat pairs. The first wheat pair will take us from the 4th into the 10th of September. The coming week is dominated by high pressure over into the east of the country, drawing up wind from a southerly, southeasterly direction. It's going to be uh, turning increasingly warm in the week ahead. All change for week two, which is the 11th of 17th of September. Low pressure then is in the ascendancy from the Atlantic. High pressure has been forced back to Scandinavia, northeastern Europe. That will be turning much more unsettled, obviously, and should be somewhat cooler as well. Uh, week three is going to be the 18th to 24th of September. High pressure event is sort of to our uh, west and southwest, probably sending the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. That would be quite a bit cooler and could be rather unsettled. And then another change for week four is the 25th of October, of, uh, September to the 1st of October, with high pressure building to our south, low pressure to the north of Scotland. We probably start to bring up wind from the southwest, driest in the southwest in the north that's four weeks away though uh, of course so it's all to be revealed and i don't think we want to look much further than the end of next week and next weekend to be honest that's where we have a lot of uncertainty within the model output will we get a reload of the high pressure and the heat or will we go uh cooler and more unsettled it is all to be revealed let me know in the comments what you think will happen let me know in the comments what you wish to happen i know there's a lot of you that would like to get on with autumn now uh, equally, there's a lot of you that uh, want an extended summer, so let me know what you think about it all in the comments. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that for Gals Rabbit. If you sub, you'll be able to see future web content. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. That's incredible and amazing. And drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. As I said, whoops, as I said, uh, at the start of the video, only 10 more subscribers now will get us to uh, 11.9k so can we get to 11.9k by the end today it would be nice if we could but we shall have to wait and see about that right that's it for today's videos end now tomorrow we've got a massive day coming up we'll start off 7 a.m forecast of course but at 2 p.m we will be premiering the first winter 2021 2021 update part one remember we're spreading updates into two parts winter updates into two parts um again this year like we did last year so part one of the first winter update will be premiered tomorrow at 2 p.m i shall be in a live chat with you all and we'll watch it together it's going to be great and then a live stream from 6 p.m. tomorrow, uh, where we'll discuss the winter update, of course, and uh, and we'll do some long-range data with that one as well. Part two of uh, the first winter 2021-2022 update will be released as a premiere again at 8 p.m. on Monday night. So that one's going to be very exciting. That'll be like analogs focus um, and whatnot. Right, so that's it for today's videos. I shall see you tomorrow for the premiere, well, for the 7 a.m. broadcast first, but for the premiere uh, at 2 p.m. And then for the live stream, you enjoy the rest of your... Oh, it's been a very long video, hasn't it? Over half an hour. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Uh, and for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.